Okay, well, welcome. Welcome to part four in this series that we're talking about here. Welcome to part four in this series that we've been talking about for the past few weeks, which is called Are Men Really from Mars and Women from Venus? And if you've been with us the past few weeks, you know we're talking about some very, very interesting materials. And we are opening eyes of the blind that have been closed for thousands and thousands of years. And what we're talking about is how men and women, big shocker here, are different. Okay, and God created us differently. And from the very, very beginning, God created them male and female. So from the very beginning, our differences were evident and were clear and were seen in so many different aspects. And through the past few weeks, we looked at two different areas about how men and women are different. We looked at how men and women are different as it comes to communication. And we said men are like cavemen, okay, and they speak in short syllables. And men speak to express information. And they said women like to communicate a little bit more elaborately and have a little bit more um, depth in their communication. And women communicate to express not information, but feelings. And we saw how this creates a lot of communication problems when, let's say, on one side, she would express, use a certain set of words, okay, and he would be only looking at the information conveyed by those words, but she would be trying to convey feelings, not information. So this would cause a problem. Now on the flip side, let's say he would go into one of his cavemen modes and he wouldn't use any words at all because cavemen just go with grunts and they don't need to communicate at all, so they go silent. And then she has the great task to figure out what in the world is going on inside him and that leads to problems as well. Our goal is like Philippians chapter 2 verse 4 says, is that let each of you look out not only for his own interests but also for the interests of others. is that our goal is to not just say what I am and who I am, but to figure out who the others are and try to learn to be... Thank you very much. And try to learn how to meet other people where they are, not assume everyone is like us, and not make others communicate the way we communicate, but try to communicate the way others do. Okay, so we've been talking about how men and women are different. And if you thought we were different before, and you like I, knowing how men and women are different, today's your day. Because today, I'm going to convince all the women that men are lunatics, and I'm going to convince all the men that women are lunatics. Okay? In case you needed some convincing, whether you're on each side here, I'm going to convince you that the opposite gender is wacko 100%. Because we're going to talk about a very regular event or occurrence for all men and for all women, and neither understands the other side. And it can be summarized very simply. You know men from Mars, women from Venus. Okay, let that one slide. Men like waffles, sp women like spaghetti. Okay, let that one go. But did you know that men are like rubber bands and women are like waves? That's our topic for today. I'll give you two stories to illustrate how men are like rubber bands and women don't get it, and how women are like waves and men don't get it. Okay? Again, names have been changed to protect the identity of those parties involved. Let's go with Dick and Jane. That's a nice standard. No one here is named Dick and Jane. So Dick and Jane come to Abuna Anthony's office, and they come for some marriage counseling. Both of them are frustrated, but clearly Jane is more distressed. And it's not just distress, but it's confusion because she can't understand what's wrong with her husband. They've been married now, let's say, six months, seven months, something like that. And everything has been great so far. Yeah, they had their little conflicts and a fight here and there, but overall things were great. He's sweet. He's romantic. He likes to talk. But then she's been noticing some kind of pattern recently over the past few months that sometimes, even though like he's loving and romantic and he's this, something will happen, and for no reason whatsoever, in her mind, no reason whatsoever, he begins to distance himself emotionally. He begins to pull away. And she can't understand why. One minute, talking, listening, attentive, understanding. The next minute, doesn't want to talk. 
doesn't want to listen. So, being the good wife, she tries to get it out of him, okay? And tries to figure out what's going on, but everything that she tries only seems to make matters worse. So she comes in fed up and frustrated. We were close, he pulled away, and there's nothing I can do to bring him back. What did I do to cause this? Let's flip it now on the male side. Let's talk about Bill and Mary. Bill and Mary also come for counseling. Similar situation, but now Bill is the one who's confused because Bill says, I can't understand my wife. For weeks, she is the most wonderful person on the face of the planet, both to myself and to everyone else. Loving, caring, unconditionally serving, doing anything, bending over backwards for everyone and anyone she meets. Then all of a sudden, on a dime, everything changes. She starts to feel overwhelmed. She starts to feel like she's doing too much. She starts to get upset and resentful and bitter. And of course, all of those emotions are focused onto one person, which is me. And she starts getting on my case about this, and I didn't help with that, and all this kinds of stuff. He says, I didn't do anything. It's not my fault. Explain to her that. Simple. For Dick and Jane, for Bill and Mary, easy. Men are like rubber bands. Women are like weights. Solves it all right there. Don't you see? When two people fall in love, okay, what you see on the TV is the romance and the love and the shining and the glowing. And that is absolutely true. But you'd be naive to think that lasts forever. Well, somehow, even though we know it doesn't last forever, when it comes to marriage, okay, and relationships, we become very shocked when the other person changes. Okay? What I'm saying, and I'll put it another way, it is crazy to expect, let's start with him, to be romantic, emotional, attentive, listening, all the time, constant, without change. And it is the same way to expect her to always be giving and loving and self-sacrificing always at this level, all the time, constant. Expecting that not to change is like expecting the weather not to change. We know that the weather outside, no one gets shocked when they say it's sunny and it turns out cloudy. Or when they say it's cloudy and it turns out rainy. Or when they say blizzard and nothing happens. We don't get shocked because the weather is unexpected. There's cycles. Okay, there's times it rains, there's time it suns, there's time it snows, there's time it wind blows. There's rhythms and cycles and patterns. And believe it or not, me and you as human beings are the same way. To be honest, the whole world is this way. Everything operates in cycles. Here's men and women's cycle when it comes to relationships. Okay? I'll say it and then I'll explain it. Men pull back and then get close. Women rise and fall in their ability to love. Men pull back and get close. Women rise and fall. What I'm saying is, it's not haphazard. There's actually a rhythm, okay? And again, like I said last week, I'm talking generalizations. Obviously, there's exceptions outside. But there is a rhythm to which people operate. The Bible tells us this in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1. To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. Okay? The Beatles knew it. The Bible knew it. And we know it is that everything in this world operates in a cyclical or seasonal pattern. There's day, and then there's night. Okay, and day doesn't last forever, neither does night. There's summer, and then there's winter. There's football season, and then there's basketball season. Okay? As much as we wish it was football season all year round, and we wish you never had to deal with NASCAR and baseball and all those things, okay? If we had football season all year round, we wouldn't appreciate it when training camp hits in August. Okay? So things go in cycles, and relationships are the same way. Men, close, pull back, get close. Women, rise, ability to give love and receive love, and fall, and rise and fall. The problem is that because each of the two is operating in a different rhythm or pattern, and a different cycle, when I see a change in my partner, 
okay? When I see a change in my husband or my wife or my whatever, well, no, just husband or wife, no whatever. <laughs> but I meant like in case you're not married. I didn't mean it that way. I mean in case you're not married. <laughs> when I see a change in the other gender, what do I automatically do is I assume it's my fault. I assume that they changed because I did something to change them. Now you can imagine how frustrating this would be like, for example, the wife who sees her husband and he's this and he's that and then all of a sudden he shuts off. Automatically she's thinking, what did I do to cause this? Well sometimes, well, sometimes she did do something to cause it, but sometimes she didn't do anything to cause it. It's a natural cycle. And for him, same way. She's happy. She's upbeat. I must be doing a good job as a husband. And then she crashes. What did I do? I must have failed. I must have done something. And we start to blame ourselves. Imagine if the cycle of weather I thought was reliant upon myself. If I thought the sun rose and fell based on my behavior. So I'm driving home one day in the summer and the sun goes down as I'm driving home. It's like 8 o'clock or something like that. And I say, oh no, because I drove, the sun went down. So the next day I don't drive. I sit at home and read. And I say, oh no, the sun went down again while I was reading. So I watch TV. And I say, oh no, the sun went down again. If I really thought the sun was based on my actions, I would be very frustrated and very confused in life. And this is the way a lot of times we are in relationships. We don't know what's causing the other person to up and down or pull and back. We assume it's something we did. We get frustrated. Men are like rubber bands. Women are like waves. Let's explain. Start with the gentleman first. Men are like rubber bands. Men are like rubber bands because they're very simple and easy to operate. Okay? <laughs> Believe it or not, this example of rubber bands, okay, when I read it, I said, oh my goodness, this is like, this is a breakthrough. The guy who wrote this wasn't a Christian guy, but this boy was inspired by God because this guy drew the perfect picture of how me and you guys, we work. Our natural cycle is that we get close, we pull away, but then when you pull a rubber band and it gets further and further, and then it gets to the edge, what happens? Immediately, as soon as you move it one step further, it snaps back with power and with strength. And me and you are the same way. <clears throat> men are like rubber bands because men have an inherent, instinctual, if that's a word, instinct, instinctive, need and urge for independence. <clears throat> I don't know who said the following quote. Give me liberty or give me death. But it was surely was said by someone that every guy admires. Okay? Because this guy knew what he was talking about. It's probably George Washington or John Adams or someone like that. Okay? Patrick Henry. It doesn't matter. Every guy has said it, but only one guy was brave enough to actually say it on the internet or something like that. Okay? But all of us think it. Give me liberty or give me death. Because life without liberty ain't worth it. In our subconscious, there is something inside of us that naturally, again, naturally, it's not, an, it's not something we choose to do. It naturally goes into intimacy and then pulls back and then snaps back and then goes this way and goes this way. It's a natural, repeated cycle. <clears throat> Women can't get this. Not at all. Women can't get that there may be nothing, okay, that they have done to cause this. That a man, listen to this one, may be very loving and very caring and extremely supportive, yet pull away. Can't get this. Because on Venus, the only time you pull away is when either A, you don't trust, or B, you're scared you're going to get hurt. That's the only time that you pull away from someone in need. So, as men do this, and as it becomes a part of a cycle, women are very puzzled and very confused. <clears throat> but the good news is, ladies, okay, as you look at this and say, oh my goodness, what am I going to do? Is that if we understand this cycle, this can enrich your relationships more than anything. That's what I'm saying. The stuff that we're talking about can destroy you or can give you the best thing ever. Because if the lady learns how to utilize, okay, the pulling away, 
What happens when the pulling away gets to the edge, like I said, is you come back with power. More power to love and more power for intimacy and more power in the relationship than he had before. But you have to let the process play, run its course. Okay? <clears throat> Many times, the married people will definitely understand this. There's nothing that caused him to pull away. And there's nothing that causes him to come back as far as, as, far as the lady is concerned. But she can see there's a big shift in the power and intimacy that he comes back with. And the other thing that's different about a man and a woman in this regard is that when a man pulls away, okay, and goes distant, he has the unique ability to be able to come right back into the relationship at the exact point he left off with, and there's no warm-up necessary, okay? For ladies, when there's distance, there has to be some reconnecting, okay? And it takes some time. For a man, it's a switch, okay? As if he never left, and as if there was never any distance. Very close, very far, very close again at the exact moment. When this happens, what do women think? Women think the man is a schizophrenic. They think he has emotional, he's emotionally disturbed. That he doesn't know what he wants and he is basically a crazy person. So what women usually do, the natural reaction when this happens is, a woman usually panics, gets scared. There must be something I did to cause it. So in order to discover what she did, she uses a very nice tool called asking lots of questions. Okay? And asking lots of questions, as much as she is doing it to try to draw him near, usually does what? Usually, her efforts to pull him closer usually push him even further away. She asks questions, what happened, why this, why that? His response is the same every time. What did I do to cause this? His response is the same. Guys, say it with me. Nothing. Very good. <laughs> Nothing. Why is this? No reason. What are you thinking? Nothing. What do you want? I'm fine. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 16, verse 25. There is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. It applies to women as well. Okay? Usually the thing our natural reaction to try to fix this in some situations, specifically in this one, will actually push him further. What a woman needs to realize that is it's not necessarily her fault. Like I said, it could be her fault, okay, and it could be a reason, but not necessarily. Men have an instinctive need to pull away, and by trying to keep him close, she's actually preventing him from being close. Because if she would allow him to pull and stretch, then she would discover him coming back with power and with force. Okay? Just like I said a little bit ago with the football thing and the basketball thing. What makes me appreciate football season is when I'm distant from football season and I realize how much I want it. So when August training camp opens, I am there and I'm standing in the rain or I'm all over at WashingtonRedskins.com. I'm all over it because I realized how much I missed it. Well, in a lot of relationships that I've seen, the lady doesn't give the man a chance to have the distance. She doesn't give him a chance to emotionally desire to be intimate. She doesn't give him that chance because she's not letting him stretch. And by not letting him stretch, she's keeping him in this limbo state, which is neither stretched nor is it close. And she's shooting herself in the foot. <clears throat> the quote in the book that I read says, if she insists on continuous intimacy, he will insist on continually trying to escape. It's our natural cycle. If you try to hold the sun down, it will constantly try to get out until it breaks free. So what we need here is we need understanding. This has been a theme of our series. We need to understand. Guys need to understand ourselves. Ladies need to understand the opposite, and then we'll get to the ladies in a second, okay? <clears throat> Three things to understand. Number one, ladies, it's not his fault. It's not his fault. He's not a schizophrenic on purpose, okay? God made him with a little bit of rubber band inside him. It's not his fault that he has a need to pull away. Just like it's not his fault when he's hungry, just like it's not his fault when he's sleepy, 
Just like it's not our fault when we're tired or we're grouchy or whatever. Well, grouchy, leave grouchy. But tired, hungry, you don't choose to be these things. He doesn't choose to have a need to pull away. That's how God made him to be. Somehow, and this is the part that I can't fully explain. Somehow, when a guy is too close, like I said, it's a give me liberty or give me death thing. He starts to lose himself in emotions and clothes and intimacy. He can't find himself. So he has a need to break free, stamp his feet on the ground, create a little bit of a fence, flex his muscle and say, yes, I'm still a man, I still have liberty. And then he can come back. I can't explain it, but it's inside all of us. Number two, preventing him from stretching is really preventing him from snapping back. Again, without understanding, he pulls away, she says, he doesn't love me. So therefore, the instinct inside her is, fight to keep him close. Don't let him get away. Make sure that he doesn't get away. Ask what's bothering him and fix whatever's bothering him. Surely it's something that can be worked out. The problem here is, why this is so important is because men usually tend to pull away at the exact same time that she wants him to be close. Like, it's usually a coordinated effort. Where she needs him at that time, and at the exact time where he pulls away. Why? I think there's two reasons why. I think number one, I think she senses him ready to pull away. So when she senses it, like women are sensing more than men. So she senses it, so she starts to, like this. And then when that happens, it naturally pushes him away. So she senses that he's at the time where he's probably going to pull away. So sometimes that causes her to say a beautiful phrase of, let's talk. Okay? And let's talk has led to many pulling away more than any other phrase in the history of all mankind. <laughs> the second reason is, is that, like I said, is that when there is a lot of closeness, this actually triggers the desire to be far. Now again, I can't explain this one in a formula, but something happens when a man is too close, bells and alarm systems start to go off, okay, which say, break free, get space. And in fact, oftentimes, what you will find, okay, and this is probably what confuses ladies the most, is that after times of extreme closeness, just after that is when the pulling away happens. Seems backwards. But in fact, that when he feels closest, oftentimes he immediately pulls away after that. Again, it's not something he chose to do. And it's not that he doesn't want to be close as much as he doesn't want to be close now. What, what? Oh, what duration? Good question. The question is like, how, what am I talking about? Like pull back for a minute or two? Um, here's what I'll say, okay? And this is what I've seen. I'm not the most experienced person in the world. I've been married for seven years, and I've been a priest for seven years, okay? And I've seen seven years' worth of experience on both experience as well as seeing. I've seen that, to be honest, it can be long, but understanding it shortens it, Okay? So in the beginning, when there's no understanding of how this cycle works, and he feels the need, and she's resisting, this can go on for a while, okay? And, and I mean, I've seen couples existing in a, in, a, in a long period of time, like, when I say long period of time, I, I'll say months, okay? Because they don't understand existing in this period for months, where he can't, and she's constantly pulling, and it's constantly pulling, okay? But, by the same token, when this system is understood, it can be almost as regular as clockwork. That he feels the need, he expresses, and we'll get to his role in it, okay? He expresses and reassures and says, go, he goes, comes back, it can be over much quicker. It can be over even the same day, okay? And hopefully it is. And you'll see that it can happen frequently. So, understanding is really the key and what limits the duration. I'll be honest, like I didn't want to say it, but I'll be honest, I know couples who have been like this their whole marriage. 
I know couples who have been like this the whole marriage. I wait till I get to the women's side, understanding the women. I know couples who have been like that because they don't understand. And instinct is not enough here. Okay, because instinct tells us, keep him close. His instinct saying, pulling away. Just like we talked about last week, it's not a lack of love. I love her, she loved me. But the problem is, you don't understand. That's why the singles here, the youngsters, the college kids, I'm setting you guys up for a great, great situation. You guys are going in with all the information. Y'all can start up there. So, preventing, stretching, is actually preventing closeness. That one seemed backwards. Third thing that she must understand is when he pulls away, don't chase, don't condemn. There are two things that a woman will do to obstruct this natural cycle in men. Chasing and condemning. Chasing, okay, let's go through the different levels of chasing. Chasing can be physical. Literally following him to the next room. And then if he leaves the house, following him out there. Don't do that. Don't chase him emotionally. Chasing him emotionally by smothering him. Asking questions. Being worried about him. Don't chase him. Give him the space. Don't chase him mentally with series of guilt-inducing questions to make him feel that big as to why he's doing this. Don't chase him. Don't condemn him either. Condemn him is, is making him feel guilty for something that's instinct inside him. A lot of times, when a man does snap back, if the woman doesn't understand this and she's hurt, what she'll do is she'll flick back. You hurt me, I hurt you. You want to be close? I don't want, now I don't want to be close. And now you want to be intimate? Now I don't want to be intimate. And she withholds on that side because she doesn't understand. Give him time. He will return. He will come back. And give him space because when he comes back, he will come back better than he left you. He will come back better if you give him the space. Okay? Again, sometimes, because a wife may not understand this, when he comes back, she will second guess his motives in coming back. Or she will mistrust him, is a better way of saying it. Mistrust. If you wanted to be close now, why you want to be close yesterday? How can you want to be close in front when Sports Center was on? Now you only want to be close now. Unfortunately, what this does, and again, I'm speaking from what I see, is this now causes him to question as well, because women are smarter than men. So when she tells him, maybe you don't really love me, and maybe you just this and that, then he says, maybe she's right. I'm not joking. Men aren't that smart as women. So when a woman says it, <laughs> what's, you disagree about the women are not as smart, the women are smarter? Again, there's exceptions to everything. Don't get me involved in your marriage. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of times when a woman will mistrust, he will start to second-guess himself as well. Do I love her? Do I not love her? Okay? We need understanding. <clears throat> now to the ladies. The men, simple. Rubber band, left, right. Left, right. Okay? Not complicated. Women are like waves. Much more elegant, majestic, difficult to figure out as well. <laughs> now I'm joking, I'm joking. Like I said, each one can't figure out the other one. Okay, so I'm just joking. Don't take it personally. Women are like waves. When a woman feels loved and feels fulfilled, it's like being up here. She can give unconditionally, sacrificing the greatest things. But then the wave just like it is unnatural for a wave to always be up, the wave will naturally crash. And when the wave crashes, you will see the exact opposite. You will see that she can't give and she can't receive. And it's not just towards men. This is like in general life principle. The crash is temporary. It doesn't last forever. But there is no doubt a crash. And during the crash, what takes place is if there was anything... I'll write this. I'll say that and then I'll explain it. The time of bottoming out of the crash is a time of emotional house cleaning. 
What I mean by that, when she hits the down, emotional house cleaning, if during the up, when she was giving and she was sacrificing and she was serving and she was, 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 whatever, if during that upswing there was any negative feelings that she suppressed or there was any resentment that she put down or any times where she denied herself in order to be loving to others during the downswing it comes out. Okay? Let me say it again. During the upswing as she is giving unconditionally there will be times where she will make sacrifices. Okay? And a lot of times she wants to make the sacrifice and she's willing. But a lot of times there may be a little bit of resentment there may be a little bit of not doing it willfully, okay, and being a little bit bitter towards it, but it's hidden, it's suppressed, it's put down. But then when the wave crashes, then it starts to come out. We can call the wave crashing, the negative part, the well. Okay? It's like going into a well. So the man has his cave, she has her well. <clears throat> when she's in her well, she will feel alone, unsupported, feel overwhelmed is a good, is a good term. And again, again, I'm saying, I'm stating some go to more extremes than others, okay? So some experience this, like there's some people not like, amen, tell it. And there's some people who maybe, so there may be degrees along the spectrum there, okay? <clears throat> but the good thing is that, again, if we utilize the wave, this is actually a very good thing. And even the bottoming out is a good thing because when she was up and she was giving and she was sacrificing and she made the sacrifice that she didn't really want or that she didn't really feel and she kind of suppressed it the bottoming out brings it to the surface and it needs to be dealt with it's not bad to deal with it like it's good to deal with it and that's where the natural system allows for it to come out and when a man is supportive and loving I shouldn't say when a man is supporting and loving okay because this applies to singles as well when a woman feels loved and feels supported and feels cared for and she can express and get it out then she's free then to rise again back to where she was that's why Colossians chapter 3 verse 19 when the Bible gives advice to husbands it says husbands love your wives and do not be bitter toward them it adds that do not be bitter why? because for guys when a woman hits the down, how does every guy naturally respond? A guy tries to fix it. He tries to fix it. Okay? What's causing you to be down? Let's fix it, and it'll never happen again. And what, what oftentimes happens, okay, what men will discover, is that trying to fix it actually prevents it from being fixed. Okay, actually prevents her from feeling better. Why? <clears throat> example. Typical example. Woman feels she starts to crash. Feeling insecure in the relationship. Feeling a little unloved, unsupported, just feels down. Needs a little extra attention, extra love. Nothing wrong. Man because he heard Abuna Anthony part three last week, he goes and gives that extra love and gives that extra support and gives the extra care and everything is fine and everything is solved. And then next week or next month, same thing happens. She goes back on a downswing. Same feeling, same problem. What is the man thinking right now? We fixed it last month. Why you bring up old stuff again? We solved it. Oh, unless you weren't listening to me. And I told you. And didn't I explain this to you? And I tried to show you. And he gets frustrated. First he's confused, okay? Then he gets frustrated. The problem is not the solution. And the problem is not something that can be solved. It is a natural cycle to be up and to be down, okay? 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7. Let me explain it before you throw things at me. Okay? This is the Bible. This is not me. The Bible says, 
the Holy Bible, written by God, not by me, says, Husbands likewise dwell with them with understanding, them as wives, giving honor to the wife as the weaker vessel. As Luke Russell. Look here. I'm not going to go into a very lengthy explanation of what this means because this, anyone who says the Bible is not for, is not for women or is, is sexist or anything like that has never read the Bible. Okay? Because that's such a ludicrous statement. It's not even worth discussing. It's not worth the energy of me to discuss it. I can discuss that at another time. This verse, just in two seconds. Okay, again, I'm not going to go into a lengthy. It's not saying that the wife is weak. It's saying that she's weaker. Okay? It's not saying that she's weak. It's saying that she's weaker. If you understand the term weaker as it's meant to be used, it's meaning like needier. And I think that if you understand the stuff that we're talking about right here, and you understand that a woman's self-esteem, nine, I don't want to say nine out of ten times, but oftentimes is related to her, the quality of the relationships in her life. And if she's married, the majority of that is related to her relationship with her husband. You will see that she is, in a sense, needier because she needs him for her self-esteem. Okay? I'm not saying it in a bad way, in a derogatory way. I'm saying that a woman's essence of herself is tied to others. Okay? Again, I'm not saying that a woman can't be happy by herself. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is women find themselves in relationships. So there's a piece of her that depends on others. It's not saying that they're weak. It's just saying that they have this... Um, what's the right word? De not dependent, but like... They rely on others for a piece of them. <clears throat> it's not bad. Okay, and the Bible's actually trying to help the ladies out here. Don't get mad at the Bible. Okay? The point here I'm trying to talk about, <clears throat> what the Bible is telling us here, is that women naturally up and then feel overwhelmed. And then feel like they need a little bit of extra. Okay? Telling her she shouldn't be down doesn't solve the problem. What solves the problem? going down with her. See? Telling her you shouldn't be down doesn't solve. It actually makes it worse. Going down with her is what she needs. So, what men, what he must understand. Okay? <clears throat> Number one, run through these quickly, is that his love and support will not instantly resolve things. Just like the example that I gave. Be loving, be supporting, be caring, be ready that the same problem happens again next month. Be ready that something else will set off the exact same feelings. Okay? Your job is not to fix. Your job is to understand and support. Number two, a woman going into her well is not his fault. When it usually happens, okay, men blame themselves. That's why they get frustrated. What did I do to cause this? I was nice and you did this, and you got upset. You shouldn't be upset. I was nice today. It's not whether you're nice or not nice. There's nothing, just like there's nothing a woman can do to prevent a man from stretching and snapping, there's nothing a man can do to prevent a woman from rising and falling. Number three, men never will understand this one in a million years, that the woman within herself has the ability to rise up. What that means is, <clears throat> men, when they hear the overwhelmed, themselves may become overwhelmed because they say, how can I solve this problem? You don't have to solve the problem. A woman has within herself the innate ability to rise again when she feels that she has done the cleaning necessary down at the bottom and feels loved, supported, etc., etc., etc. Believe it or not, just like a man may snap after times of extreme closeness, a woman may also crash after ex times of extreme closeness. Let me tell you a standard example that every married couple will go through. <clears throat> and they see it too many times. A couple goes away, let's say they go on vacation. Going through, you know, busy before all that stuff, go on vacation, and vacation's perfect. Perfect. 
effect on both sides. Loving, romantic, whatever. Everything is perfect. Feel like they're sharing spiritually, emotionally. Everything is perfect. They feel so close. And they're so excited to go back home and be closer than ever before. And when they first go back home, they maintain it. Okay? They didn't wa- he didn't watch TV on the vacation. All vacation, he didn't watch TV. And they were so close, and he comes back and didn't watch. And then one night, two weeks later, as she's going to bed, he turns on the game. Just the one game. It's a seven-game series. He missed the first six. It's game seven. Figure he's just going to watch one game. Doesn't make her happy. Doesn't make her happy. This is his way of starting to stretch. He just needs a little bit of time just to watch the game. As he begins to stretch, she starts to get upset and starts to say why and how and all this kinds of stuff. Before you get into the, it can explode. Okay, but bef- let's pause it like he's doing Say by the Bell. Let's pause right here. What's going through the people's minds right now? The Martian, the man, I haven't watched TV for two weeks. I've been ultra good. Okay? I've been very caring, very loving. I have given up the first six games. It's just one night. I deserve a break. I have been behaving. I deserve this. And if she denies me this, that means that she's unreasonable and she's fill in the blank. <coughs> Venus, logic, her logic, exact opposite. Her logic, ever since the start of our marriage, we have been waiting to achieve a time of emotional intimacy like we have now. We have been aiming to achieve this. We finally got it. Things have been great. He's been happy. I've been happy. Never been better. Why would he do this now? It hurts even more now. If I hadn't tasted the closeness, then it wouldn't be as painful. But why would you do it now? Why would you go back to the way things used to be? This becomes a huge fight. He explodes. She explodes. I hate you. You hate me. Everyone hates everyone. And then if he's a true man, he can explain to her in a very sensitive way that she shouldn't be hurt and she shouldn't be offended and, and she should be fine with it and in his very sensitive and caring way. What's the problem here? Again, is the problem lack of love. The problem is not lack of love. The problem is lack of understanding. A lot of times, when men and women argue, they're arguing for two different things. And each is willing to grant the other if they just understood. Men argue for a right to be free. Women argue for a right to be upset. Okay? I don't mean it in a funny way like that. I mean they, they, they have a right to have feelings and to be hurt and to be sad and to be overwhelmed. She's arguing for one thing, which he's willing to grant if he understood it. And he's arguing for something else, which, he's, which she's willing to grant if she understood it. Problem is, he thinks she's saying, you're never allowed to watch TV again. She thinks he's saying, you're crazy because you're unreasonable and irrational. By supporting and by understanding can solve this problem. And like I said, the wave and the rubber band, if we understood it, I promise you, can be the best thing if you understand it in your relationship. One last thing here before I close. What happens in that unique situation where he wants to pull away as she wants that intimacy? What happens if their needs are exact same time, which oftentimes, by the way, happens? But the time he needs to pull away the most is the time she needs him the most. What to do in that situation? Like the ideal is that if I see she's that and I'm okay, I can give that and then she'll give me when I return and vice versa. But what happens if simultaneously he needs to pull away but she needs the support? My question is, who should give in? Who should give in? I need emotional support and I know he needs to pull away but I need emotional support. Who should give in? Let me explain, okay? Let me explain before you jump down my throat. I believe, based on what I've seen, 
that he should pull away first. That he should pull away. Why? You may be surprised by that. It seems like the uncaring response. But the truth of the matter is, if he doesn't pull away, he will do more harm than good. Okay? He will do more harm than good unless you give him the space to pull away. Again, I said it like ten times, but I'll say it again. I'm not talking about situations like I'm not giving a, 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 a free get-out-of-jail pass to never be close. And I'm not giving the get-out-of-jail pass here either. So there's those situations. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when there's love and there's caring and he wants to be there, but he can't. And she wants, but she can't. Let him pull away. Ladies, trust me. You keep him in there, he will not be supported. He can't. He can't listen. He can't. There are times where he physically can't listen. He can't until he pulls away. And by keeping him in, and guys, by you trying to keep yourself in and not admitting that you need to get out, you're doing more harm than good. You're not really listening. You're just counting the seconds till it finishes. And all you're doing is most likely going to be judging and probably lead to an explosion of some sorts. Let him pull away. Now with that said, guys, if you're really loving, then like I said a thousand times, is that you reassure before you go. Okay, and that's really where the first step should be. Is that, <clears throat> for example, I know you're upset. I know you need to talk. I know you need me to listen. I need just a little bit of time. Okay, just a little bit of time. Leave me to the cave. I promise I'll be back before the end of the night. I promise. That... If you ask me how to resolve the situation, I would say that would be a good scenario. He pulls, he cools. And what happens when he gets to the end? Ladies, he's coming back ten times stronger like that rubber band. You're actually doing yourself a favor by letting him go. Okay? Ephesians chapter 5, verse 33. The Bible says, Nevertheless, let each one of you in particular so love his own wife as himself and let the wife see that she respects her husband. It is not wrong for him to feel a need for independence and like autonomy. Women should respect that. And it is not wrong for her to feel needy and need attention and love and support. Men should respect that as well. Last verse I'll show you right here. Proverbs 16, verse 22. Understanding is a wellspring of life. To him, or her, because I'm gender neutral, who has it? And I believe that is very true in our relationships. The problem is not that marriage is bad. The problem is that people in marriages don't understand each other. And if we continue to understand and seek to understand ourselves and others, I promise it can do great things in all your relationships. Okay? Let's stand up for a prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Lord, we thank you from the depth of our heart, because you haven't left us alone in this world, and you haven't left us without guidance, but you've given to us a map, and you've given to us directions, and, and you show us, dear Lord, what it takes to, be, to have a fulfilling and satisfying life. Lord, I pray that you would continue to help us grow in our understanding of ourselves and of others, that we may truly live not just for our own selfish and greedy desires that we can truly live for others and that we can esteem others better than ourselves and seek to meet others where they are and not expect everyone to be like us. Thank you for each and every single person here who is dedicated to you and is dedicated to finding out and understanding more about themselves. I pray that you would bless them in their relationships whether now or in the future or whenever. Accept our prayers in the name of our Lord, God, and Savior and King Jesus Christ the intercessions and prayers of our Holy Mother, St. Mary, St. Mark, all the saints who have pleased you since the beginning, hear us as we pray thankfully, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one, through Christ Jesus our Lord, thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever, amen, no announcements, go in peace.